the launch of the 2020 countdown of the year of Charlotte, uh, Charlotte Manya Matlake in 2021. We thank you for joining us on this special occasion and the difficult times we face as a country with a pandemic that can not only impact and uh, threaten or, or our health and, and well-being, but also devastating to our livelihoods as families, business, and society as a whole. We draw strength from those who came before us and faced the most difficult times and somehow overcame their struggles with grace and might so that this generation can live a better life. Ladies and gentlemen, Honorable Minister, a year today marks 195 days left to 2021, a year which we aim to highlight as the legacy, the history and teachings of our nation's icon, a true stalwart, Charlotte Manya Maklaike. On the April 7th, 2021, she would have been 150 years. Even, even before her death, she was honored as the mother of black freedom in South Africa. At the meeting of the All Africa Convention in December 1935, by Dr. Bartini Kuma. She passed away, joining her husband, Charlotte, sorry, uh, Marshall Matlake on the 16th October, 1939, at the age of 65. A death funeral in Cliptown, Soweto. Her eulogy ended with the words, she was everyone's friend and no one's enemy. The countdown. Making, marking this come down, we felt it befitting to highlight the partnership we have, the National Research Council and Charlotte Matlake Institute in ensuring the preservation of her legacy. Ladies and gentlemen, with those words, I present to you the first speaker, a chairperson of the National Heritage Council, Dr. Tulani Mbuli. Honorable Minister Mteto, leadership of the Charlotte Manya Maglaga Institute, leadership of civil society, members of the media, colleagues from the National Heritage Council. <coughs> I recall, we will not let you to die. We have noticed <clears throat> your initiative. Then I ask, who am I speaking to? He said, tell them that you have met Charlotte Manya Makwag. That was last year, 8 October when I was at ICU. Minister, we are really honored by your presence. We register our extra appreciation to the members of the media who, in spite of difficult time, we are in the war against COVID, the war of gender-based violence, the war against poverty, but you have made time to be with us in this occasion. The National Heritage Council is an agency of the National Department of Sports, Arts and Culture. So Minister Mtetwa is our main shareholder representative here. National Heritage Council was established to coordinate heritage help achieve some imbalances, to address some imbalances of the past in South Africa as our heritage was distorted. To this end, our vision is that we should be a nation proud of its African heritage. 
The, Na the National Heritage Council has developed a variety of focus program minister that help mainstream heritage in South Africa and in an African society. One of the cornerstones principles of NHC work is that freedom was not free. That the nation does not know its past is in danger of taking care of its future. Therefore, the heritage of the resistance and liberation receive a special attention from us. The NHC recognized pioneers and nation builders who made sterling con contribution under the very difficult condition in their various walk of life. In time of COVID and beyond, NHC has prioritized, prioritized knowledge production, accessing all people, people of our country through digital platform. I think we must take an advantage, Minister, that this COVID is coming to teach us new trends of doing things using digital, which was a little bit ignored. Mama Charlotte Manya Maglega has a special place in our hearts. Is one of those pioneers, not only because of her pioneering vision of lifting. He said, she said, don't live above your people. Make sure when you rise, when you rise, take someone with. A woman of first. The legacy she left with us will continue to save us to this day. NHCS government agency operate within the realization that working together we can do more. As a result, he has, has cultivated a winning partnership with diverse civil society, organization, institutes, and foundation that specially on different key moments, movements, matters, stalwarts of our struggle. I'm praying, Minister, that next year our national movement adopt 2021 as a year of Mama Maglag. We have been doing together with these uh, movements a uh, civil society sterling work. Honorable Minister, this is your day. Teach us. We know you. You, you have led us. As we invited you to launch this, we don't have enough words to thank you for making time in spite of your tight schedule. We welcome you to launch this campaign and to the, today's ceremony. Organizers of today's program, thank you very much for braving COVID and all the other challenges we face to make sure that this work continues. Job Kaikal. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson, Dr. Tulani Mbuli and Doloti. You will be thanked in an appropriate time. Thanks for those uh, wonderful words. Uh, mine is just to call speakers uh, to the podium. It is my uh, great honor to uh, invite to the podium the Chairperson of uh, Shadow Matake Institute, uh, Mr. Tulani Makanya. Over to you, sir. Uh, Minister of Sports, Arts and Culture, Honorable Minister Nyambose, uh, Dr. Mbouli, the Chair of National Heritage Council, the CEO of National Heritage Council, Advocate Sonobile Mbangotwa, Mrs. Mosue, President of District Women's Missionary Society of AME Church, uh, family and board members of Charlotte Manya Maklag Institute, Mamu Olga Sema and Moketsi Makleke, 
CMMI Ambassador and the African, Africa's youngest PhD holder, Dr. Musa Sorombe, all members of the National Heritage Council, the Department of Sports, Arts and Culture, and members of the media, I greet you. In As the Chadot Manye Maklage Institute and great-grandchildren of Me Maklage and her sister Kate Makanya, our mission is to ensure her works come into light so that this generation may use her story as a torch in solving today's challenges. Marking our countdown to 2021, we felt it befitting to highlight the work we do in preserving her legacy and her heritage with the full support of National Heritage Council. We are also strongly influenced by her words when she said, I quote, this work is not for yourself. Kill that spirit of self. Do not live above your people, but live with them. And if you can rise, bring someone with you." Unquote. With the current challenges we're facing as a country, the attack on women, the gender-based violence, as men and society as a whole, we should stand with our women and for our women and ensure that safe is paramount. We join the president call in saying gender-based violence cannot be tolerated. We mark this countdown to 2021 with activities that will highlight the work of Mama Clegg and encourage dialogues amongst all people of our, society, of our society. Starting in the last week of June to July, we shall host online dialogues called Ingunutela. This will encourage voices of youth to engage using our platforms, uh, Charlotte Manya Maklai Institute social platforms. Uh, it's an online meeting of minds and conversations to highlight our so socio-economic relatives as South Africans. In the uh, month of, of August, which is a women's month, We've got two programs, Bring Her Up, Women of First Awards, and She Was Here, hashtag she was here, she, she was here, which is a storytelling and performance sessions. Um, under Bring Her Up, Women of First Awards, we highlight and celebrate women who have made their mark in various sectors from sport, education, research, agriculture, business, leadership, arts, culture, heritage, and STEM. We shall also highlight the women who are, who are currently leading in the fight against COVID-19 in various sectors and different levels of society. Under She Was Here, hashtag She Was Here, storytelling and performance sessions, we feature women who are in the arts, from poets, singers, writers, to highlight the values and work Charlotte McLeod accomplished and how we can continue with these values to uplift our communities. In the month of September, uh, which is a National Heritage Month, we'll be celebrating the legacy of this towering figure through a heritage trail, connecting the steps of Charon McLeod's life with plaques that portray the story of her life, the significance of her presence. We will be starting from her birth in Fort Beaufort, Eastern Cape, to her as a performer, a singer, life, her life as a student at Wilberforce University, to her space of <laughs> activism from the meeting in Queenstown, um, of, which was South African Native Convention, where she questions women's involvement. That was 1902. We also will also cover her as the only woman in the room in the SANNC first conference in 1912, to her last days in Clip Town, Soweto. In October, we shall launch the call in creating the Charlotte Manye Maklege 
In Me booklet. A call to students, formidable achievers, community members, leaders in various sectors, voices across the continent and the globe to write 150 words in line with the 150 celebration that portray the value in Charlotte MacGregor they aspire to emulate. Between now and December, we've aligned our work with the National Heritage Council, um, with also of our another great partner, Nozala Trust, as we play our part in defeating the impact of COVID-19 pandemic in our communities. As we provide dignity packs to women in these communities, we work with communities in uh, Clip Town, Freedom Park, Soweto, Chief Lutuli in Davidton, Hamas Kral, Charon Maclage Secondary in Everton, as well as we've already started work with uh, health workers at Charon Maclage Hospital. We, we ask all South Africans, people of the African continent, the world, to join us in remembering and celebrating the great life of Charon Maclage by being of service to our communities. Uh, before I, I take a seat, through the permission of, of our program director, um, can we view a message of support from one of the women of first, the first president of COSATU? Mama Charlotte Manya Matege. As we count down to 150 years in 2021, we are battling with COVID-19 pandemic, gender-based violence, femicide, and high levels of unemployment. Women, as we know, face triple oppression from race, class, to gender. It is therefore important to remember Mama Charlotte Manya Matege when she said, and I quote, this work is not for yourselves. Kill that spirit of self and don't live above your people, but live with them. And if you can rise, bring someone with you. Close quote. I want to challenge ourselves to reflect and assess how are we measuring up to this challenge that Mama Matlaike has put to us, in particular with regards to the struggle working class women continue to face at their homes, in their communities, at the workplace and in society. Women and girls are subject to violence from abusive fathers and partners. And as we all know too painfully, that the levels of sexual abuse, rape and violent crimes against women and children and girl children continue to rise. They continue to be attacked, to be abused and to be murdered in our own communities. So beyond 16 days of activism and attending funerals, what are we doing about this? What are we going to do as trade unions, as alliance partners, as government, as civil society to transform and dismantle the legacy of apartheid? Do we live up to the progressive standards that these working class women correctly set for us? Are we champions in the fight against sexual harassment? Are we investing in the education of women? Do we have programs to empower women shop stewards and women leaders in our organizations? If we are not doing these, then indeed we are not fulfilling the legacy of Mama Charlotte Matek. And I'm challenging ourselves today and I say, we know what is to be done. Like Mama put it, if you can rise, bring someone with you. Let us celebrate the life and times of Mama and continue to rise and bring someone with us to the next level. Long live the undying spirit of Mama Charlotte Manya Mateke. Long live. Amanda. To, to further present 150th uh, celebration set for 2021, I would like to invite 
Dr. Musawengosi Sorombe uh, to take us through the program for 2021. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to greet all the dignitaries in the house and all the guests that we have this morning, all protocol observed. In order to save our time, I will go right into the continuation of what our CEO has already alluded to. Now, we all know the purpose of our presence here this morning, and it's important for us to think and ponder on the significance of Umam Charlotte as we count down towards her 150th um, birthday that would have been next year. Now, in memory of Umam Charlotte and the enormous contributions that she made to both South Africans and international citizens, the CMMI has initiated a series of programs to celebrate her achievements, preserve her legacy, promote her teachings, advance the, the values she stood for, and elevate her name. We deem it important for us to connect with all South African public through programs that tackle the current challenges, especially being faced by women. Like I've mentioned before, the CEO already alluded to some of the programs that we will be facilitating as the CMMI that we join, that we ask all the stakeholders, the relevant stakeholders, to also participate in. And the first program being the intergenerational dialogues that we will have in January. Now, these dialogues are in partnership with the National Heritage Council, and it, they are important in order to allow the discussion and obviously um, allow for greater knowledge on the significance that she had in our societies, our communities, and how we can build from the foundations that she laid, and also the foundations that other um, iconic figures made towards the future that we envisage. We also will be having a Bring Her Up program, which has been running for a few years now. In February, that's when it's anticipated to take place, where we empower young women, young girls, and equip them to know the power that they hold within themselves and to elevate them to positions that will leverage them to launch them into society as weapons and tools that can actually address so many of the social ills that we find ourselves faced with today. We will also be doing a sanitary towel drive, uh, which has been accustomed already to the CMMI, and holding, again, intergenerational conversations in provinces that specifically related to her life. So that is Limpopo, the Eastern Cape, and Gauteng. We'll also have a human rights march where we will be fighting aggressively against gender-based violence. I'm sure we all heard the address of the President of the Republic of South Africa where he was gravely reprimanding um, the men of our communities that we live among who have seen, who have decided or resorted to, to using women as punching bags. And we should continue to fight against this because it's absolutely imperative if we would like to see um, the complete emancipation and empowerment of women in our communities and societies. Also in April, there will be the Matlake week. We know that April is usually the month that we celebrate um, her, her birth, and we will be uh, hosting a number of events as well, which will include a memorial lecture and also a debate to keep our young minds um, invigorated and also aware of themselves and aware of the, responsibi the responsibility and the duty that they have to continue the work that um, iconic figures such as Mom Charlotte started. Now, we also in May will have the Continent of Light, which is talks delivered to women 
uh, talks delivered by women leaders, rather, on solutions needed for our rural and township com communities. Also in June, there will be the CMMI Youth Forum, as we have heard before, where youth um, of the rural and urban areas will come together and all these young leaders are expected to have their voice and also uh, provide their narrative of how they would like to see the future unravel. Also in July, we will have the Legacy of Service, where we will learn lessons from Umam Charlotte and Utata Mandela in dialogue on solving today's problems using the spirit of service, which is what um, Umam Charlotte greatly epitomized even in her life. Also, we will have in August the Women's Movement March, August being, of course, the month where women are uh, largely commemorated here in South Africa. And in order to honor what Umam Charlotte strongly believed in, as we've already heard before from the message that was broadcasted or played before um, my address, that Umam Charlotte believed that when you rise, you need to also bring others with you because that's what creates a ripple effect. Because when you bring someone else up and they bring someone else up, then that's how we rise as a community. And it's time that we go back to the fundamentals of African leadership and its essence, which is Ubuntu. I am because you are. Also, we will have the launch of the documentary film, um, which will, of course, be showing um, the traverse of Umam Charlotte's life and the work that she did the life that she led and all that she left um, behind for us to revere and also emulate. We will have also the Women of First Awards, which have also been running for a few years now, where we will be honoring women who are um, doing significant, making significant strides in their spheres of influence, and of course, encouraging them to do more, and also while encouraging others to come to the fore with the, the strengths and talents that they also embody. We will also have in September, that is the Heritage Month here in South Africa, we will be having uh, the National Heritage Trail, which will also in, in engrave the work that she did, the trail that she left, and how she actually pursued every um, milestone in her life so purposefully, and also to encourage young people to do the same. Also, we will have um, a dialogue between herself and Dr. Webb Dubois. Uh, who was a teacher and uh, ultimately a friend of hers when she attended at Wilberforce University. So this month will, of course, also um, see us hosting the National Heritage Trail and mobile museums, share research of Umam Charlotte with the Her National Heritage Council, and also publish a book on her life, as well as the hosting of storytelling sessions. In October, we expect to have an intergenerational leadership seminar because that's also what this um, initiative seeks to achieve. That is ensuring that young leaders continue to be equipped and be empowered to take up the reins that they should in the imminent future. In November, we have now made it a custom to have a annual golf day as well, which will be hosted. And this will be, of course, a fundraising initiative to contribute towards all the activities that we continue to, to pursue as the CMMI. Also, uh, the reconnecting with universities that feature Umam Charlotte, because it's important that the universities who actually take initiative to remember her and to keep her memory alive also educate those who are attending at those universities. Uh, take, for example, the university where I um, work, where I lecture, the University of the Free State. I recently found out that the Kwakwa campus has a residence named after her. And I wondered to myself whether 
the, 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 the students who live in that residence actually know who Umam Charlotte was and who she is and the significance that she has in our society today, all the work that she put in and all the strides that she made to ensure that they're able to enjoy the liberty and freedom that they do today. So it's important that we reconnect with these universities as well. Also in December, we will host a, a music festival where um, African and especially South African performers will be um, invited and this will also be a fundraising initiative for both the Bring Her Up and Bring Him Up initiative. So we ask you to continue to support us and we thank you immensely for your um, continued support for all to all these initiatives and we, we thank you for your commitment and your presence here today. Um, I I'm just going to call the next speaker. I just need to confirm the name so I don't say it wrong. I will ask Mrs. Rishu Gedzwe Musue to uh, take to the podium next. Thank you very much. All protocol observed. I bring you greetings from the leadership of the 19th Episcopal District of the AME Church, Bishop E. L. McLeod and Supervisor Patricia Russell McLeod Esquire. Um, we are humbled to have been part of this and being invited to be part of this. Often at times it is difficult to capture the essence of those who preceded you in life. The difficulty comes from the part that most of the time you would refer to words spoken, written, and the thoughts. And throughout the above, stories come alive and journeys come alive, even though we are separated by time. This is a story of a young woman from the Eastern Cape who planted a seed that grew into many, many big trees. Most of us never knew her personally. We are even unaware of her personal struggles. We are even unaware of her victories, her challenges, and even her failures. But we know that she lived, and therefore, because she was, we are. Ido Kovenikin said in one of the books that I read at some stage, even though our time in life is temporary, <laughs> if we live well enough, our legacy will last forever. This is the legacy of Charlotte Makomo Makeke, a legacy that is full of power, determination, exceptionalism, dignity, and this is what the AME Church is all about. Her genealogy is such that she was a daughter of a lay preacher, and from an early age she knew the bounty and wonders of a liberating gospel. The history of the AME Church is born out of a political struggle, both here in Africa or in South Africa and in the USA. <coughs> and this is the history that remains a symbol of justice, dignity, equality, and this is the fabric of the AME Church. Therefore, Charlotte McClick's life and he, her life's escapade espouse the ideals of the main fabric of the AME Church which I've just mentioned. Her family history is such that when they moved to the Northern Cape, she did the following. She, she taught English to the Africans and indigenous languages to, 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 to the Africans and the expatriates is taught uh, also indigenous languages. She gave herself to others so that others may grow. And these are the ideals that we must continue both as a church and as a society. We know from all that that she lived to give herself for the upliftment of others. And this is what we have to do as a church and as a society. We know her political history from readings also, that it was deep rooted in the faith and in love. 
it was deep rooted in faith and love that it was a requirement in seeking emancipation on, uh, of African, particularly African women. And she taught us that even at our lowest form as human beings, we must give ourselves and give our best. A black African woman living in that era. Her struggles then are not unfamiliar to myself particularly or to any of the women living in the current times in the church and also in the broader society. Her credentials are well known to us. She's the first black woman to be accredited, to, to be awarded a, a, a BSc degree, a, found, a founding member of the Bantu, uh, Bantu Women's League, the president of the Women's Missionary Society of the AME Church, and therefore that is why I said it is difficult to talk about people who preceded you because this is the position I am currently holding. She established and was a founder of the Wilberforce community, which is part of the AME Church in Everton. In all that, she reminded us and manifested the words spoken by another great woman in 2016 who said, when they go low, we go up and we go even higher. And throughout all that, we must continue her legacy in the church and in the society because you cannot separate the church and the society. We need to be more brave, daring, courageous, strong, and true to form. And as a way forward, we say as the AME Church, particularly also as the Women's Missionary Society of the 19th Episcopal Church, what is it that we ought to do? We ought to go where others do not go, dare not to go. We need to even reach more difficult heights. We need to be transformed non-conformists. We need to be champions of justice and dignity. We need to be the change that we need to be, and not only dream of the change, we need to espouse the change. We need to live the change. And we need to, to heed the call. As women missionaries, we are called, and we need to heed that call. We need to understand that it is not only just a call, but a call for service, a call to go and dirty our hands, a call, a call to go and rise up and rise up and bring that other person. It is a call to build, a call to teach and to learn and excel, not just teach and learn, we need to excel in doing all that. And by doing that, we will be leaving the legacy of Meshalot. And as the Women Missionary Society of the AME Church, we are saying, because she was, we are, and have to remain the bastion of ebony excellence. She was a shining star. How can we not be even shining brighter? And even in her darkest hours and darkest hours of the midnight, she continued to shine. And we need to remember that in our calling, we need to remember that it is a call that we have to take. And a choice that we have to make is, will we answer? Will we answer to this and take up the, bus, the, the, the bait on? Will we answer to this and continue? And as the Women Missionary Society of the AME Church, we are saying we are part of Charlotte Matleke. We leave Charlotte Matleke and we will continue to espouse the legacy of Charlotte Matleke. And we bring a commitment that this is the woman that is. Hence, I am donning on the uniform to show that we are leaving her legacy. And I thank you and I pray that you are blessed and we pray that we continue to live the legacy. And as I invite Meba Tabile Dlamini, the president of the African Women's Missionary uh, of the ANC uh, Women's League. Thank you very much. Good morning. Uh, director of the program, um, Dr. Mbuli, uh, Tulas, 
the Minister of um, Arts and Culture and Sports and all of us um, here. We must um, all thank Mampeta Kloa Chulas because when she was the Treasurer General of the ANC Women's League, she was also a leader of the uh, mich Women's uh, Missionary Amen. of the AME. And that gave us an opportunity to all understand and internalize the leadership that uh, the country and the ANC has had uh, before. Most of the time when people spoke about uh, Charlotte McLeague, they spoke about a singer. It's not a wrong thing, but uh, when Charlotte was a singer, there are outstanding uh, things uh, she did. People say she was called uh, by the Queen to sing for the Queen when they were in England. And uh, she said uh, to the Queen before they started singing, I would like uh, my people to sit uh, like you and listen uh, to music and enjoy uh, music like you one day. But also they don't even um, talk about that when she was young. At some stage, uh, she said, uh, one day I will go and study and come back and liberate my people. So uh, she was, a, okay, a heroine, but also, she was a teacher. She was a communist. She was a freedom fighter, a fighter for women's rights. And it, men found it uh, difficult to leave her out when they had a, their significant activities in the country. But also she started uh, presenting to the leadership uh, of, the, uh, of the African National Congress before the African National Congress was formed. But uh, they were uh, moving towards uh, the formation and her presentations, wherever uh, she was, were outstanding. She was a firebrand. She was a uh, fearless. And when uh, a union, it was a commercial uh, union, um, was formed. She was invited uh, formally there. And uh, with Josie Palmer, after that uh, conference, they wrote a letter to the leadership of the ANC. And uh, during uh, those uh, times, it was very hot. And uh, questioned uh, why uh, the ANC did not uh, invite uh, women to the formation of the ANC, criticized them. And out of all leaders of the ANC, the only uh, leader that uh, invite, invited her to serve in the NEC as a representative of women was Babu Mahaban. Around uh, 1918, the Bantu Women's League was formed and she became uh, the president. 
But when the ANC leadership saw that uh, she was a force to reckon with, they relaunched the Bantu Women's League. It was around uh, 1938. And uh, if you read uh, carefully and analyze uh, that, they were trying to take uh, the Bantu Women's League from, the, uh, from Charlotte Maclay. And they said uh, she was busy uh, because she was uh, now appointed to work uh, with her uh, children. She loved her uh, children. She loved uh, working with young girls, with young women. They say uh, she was busy. Charlotte Maclega started uh, working uh, there around uh, 1918, but only uh, around 1938, they say uh, she was busy in, with other things. And that's not true. She recruited the only a leader of those times that was elected, and then uh, someone else was uh, elected, and then uh, that leader uh, came back uh, again, Reverend Mahaban. And Reverend Mahaban took a decision after having a uh, conversations with uh, Charlotte McLeod. And uh, she, he saw that El Charlotte Matlege had taken a special path that had to do with universal uh, suffrage. But also, she understood uh, the issues of the land. When you read a uh, minutes of the meetings, uh, she attended, she was a rebel because she would not agree to take decisions she did not uh, believe in. When men accepted a uh, passes, Charlotte McLeague, uh, and other women she led refused to take uh, passes. They banned uh, the passes. Free State, Bloemfontein, they banned uh, passes there. And uh, it's as if uh, the passes, passes were banned uh, later uh, in the ANC. They started uh, long ago. There were boundaries uh, in South Africa. Indian women could not go to Newcastle. She took uh, Indian uh, women, firstly, had a relationship with them around uh, those years. And uh, took them, they went uh, through uh, Newc uh, Newcastle and went uh, to Peter Maritzburg. And during uh, those days, <laughs> it was not easy to move around as a black woman and mostly an African woman. Charlotte McLeague, you look at where, where she was born, Beaufort West. There were wars of resistance uh, waged uh, around uh, that area. And uh, so you can see uh, she came uh, from the family of fighters. She loved uh, South Africa. She traveled uh, the whole uh, country. And she was in very uh, important uh, areas in her life. Northern Cape, there was mining there, Gauteng. People uh, came uh, to Johannesburg uh, for work. And she found herself uh, looking after young women that followed uh, their husbands uh, to Johannesburg and uh, had to find uh, ways of survival. And uh, 
we hear about uh, Mao Zedong and uh, let uh, the flowers uh, bloom. She's, uh, Mao Zedong was talking about uh, ideas there. Oh, Mam Charlotte spoke about uh, young women as uh, flowers. And it is our great leader, Ubabu Oliver Tambo, that also spoke about uh, the flowers of the nation. And therefore, trying to ensure that we walk and travel the life and times of Mam Charlotte Matlege is great. It is very important so that uh, young women know that when you fight uh, for the struggle for the emancipation of women, you are walking on the footsteps of women, great women, that could be presidents of the ANC. But because of patriarchy, they could not. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm very sorry for keep on saying in absentia, I didn't see you. You have journeyed with us uh, very well. We're not in a funeral. Uh, we can't rebury uh, uh, And there's no grave uh, big enough to bury her. So uh, we, one thing that we cannot do, which I understand during this time of Corona, perhaps is to, is to, is to, is to sing whilst we have got uh, this uh, mass, but we can laugh and, and smile, you know. But at some time we must use to also to, to sing whilst uh, we have the mass on, because the, these mass are still going to be with us for a long, long, long time. Uh, so we must actually adapt you know, uh, to, to, the, to the mass. Uh, President of the, of the Women's League has journeyed with us, and uh, I know that <clears throat> there's that item of the video, but <clears throat> we, 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 we will, uh, you know, uh, you know, slot it. Um, knowing, of course, um, the, the busy schedule of our minister, but uh, what I will do <clears throat> just is to introduce the minister. Um, except for what you know, because if you Google, you'll see the minister's um, minister Mtetwa, uh, his, his uh, you know profile, uh, the minister of, of our sports and culture, the uh, was minister of police, was the chairperson of the um, portfolio committee on on minerals and energy. Uh, served on the board of directors of FIFA. You also see that he was once a chief whip of the African Shell Congress. Uh, but, but one thing that, of course, an ANC member of the ANC, sorry, of the ANC um, elected to, uh, uh, three times, Pulukwani Mangaung and Nazrek. But one thing that you won't say about him is the fact that uh, he draw his uh, political and ideological outlook from his membership of the African National Congress that he participated and uh, joined, uh, led, uh, for close to 40 years of his life, because I know his life my, with my eyes closed. One thing that I can also tell you is that part of that 40 years involves his membership of the South African Youth Congress, SAICO. Uh, SAICO, an organization that um, Oliver Tambo, when he closed the conference of the African Shell Congress in Cabo, in Zambia, in uh, 1985, he actually mentioned that um, it is the task. He actually issued a clarion call to render apartheid structures unworkable and render apartheid ungovernable. Uh, Minister Natim Teta was one of those, by swelling the ranks of Psycho, 
who was prepared to lay his life in, in responding to that uh, clarion call of Oliver Tambo, the President General of the ANC. He's one of the few, actually, who attended, a few uh, living who attended the conference of Psycho that was in, Ka in Kanyamazan, in Pumalanga. And also the first conference of the ANC Youth League in 1991 that was held in Kwandebele. His membership actually stretches from, used to be called the Lioness of Southern Natal. We can also, you know, uh, uh, safely mention the fact that he actually uh, links the, the, the national and, and class struggles. For he has been involved in the, as, a, as an organizer of FAO, be it also in the unemployed <coughs> structures or unemployed uh, organization of the Southern Natal. The very rare indeed. Also, of course, we see his growth and his illustrious uh, political involvement being, uh, you know, uh, 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 when he was elected in the uh, in Youth League, in the National uh, uh, Working Committee of the in Youth League, but of course, uh, uh, to be, of course, in the structures of the ANC. I can also mention, as I am going to invite him, that we remember he is uh, the people that uh, participated with him in KwaZulu Natal, uh, Stitching Ubani and as well as and all other, other, other people, Zion Jangas. And as I call him uh, to the podium, our minister, uh, Sondela Mnyambosa, uh, Mfulu Zemnyama, Eketabawili, Nabawelayo, Bayo Kogalela, Bagantlamba, Tlamba, Kangelani, Ngoba, Angitreli Luto, Lomuntu, eh, Nyambose, Titala Wena Maka, Consiban Silva. Thanks so much. Thank you very much, uh, Program Director, and uh, good morning to everyone. Uh, we uh, and thanks for your uh, kind words. Uh, at one point, it felt like an obituary. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but thank you very much, uh, CEO. You have the chairperson here with you of the of the National Heritage Council, and uh, we have uh, uh, leaders uh, who came before us. Uh, CEO of uh, Maklake, Tulasis. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, for organizing this very important uh, uh, interaction. Uh, Dr. Musa Sarombe, uh, who was here with us, uh, Mrs. Masue, the president of Epicos, Ep what? Episco hey. Episcopal uh, District, the president of the Women's League. We saw also the president of the of Kosatu uh, here uh, on the uh, in the uh, message here, and thanks the uh, president of uh, the Women's League for taking us through on a journey of such a colossal figure uh, in our history. I'm told also that uh, we have uh, the grandson. Uh, of uh, uh, Norway, the SG of Norway, uh, advocate uh, Duma Norway. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, in extending this uh, warm and revolutionary welcome uh, to this very important project and process of the countdown of uh, 150th anniversary uh, of Ma Charlotte Manyama Kleke, which as the CEO has indicated, countdown is 195 days. 195 days. <coughs> so in, 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 in welcoming everyone else uh, who's here, I would like to start by this quote. Never forget where we came from and always praise the bridges, 
that carried us over. That was funny, Lo. Uh, hammer on this. We we meeting, uh, conversing about this uh, uh, colossus uh, at the time when it's so appropriate to do so. Uh, at a time when uh, the call for decoloniality of our public spaces. Uh, through the symbols, national symbols and monuments, is, is getting louder and louder. It's a very important call, which everybody must heed, because it talks to the lives, the life and times of Ma Charlotte MacGregor, who was very clear about her stance against colonialism. Uh, we also meet at a difficult time of uh, COVID-19, engulfing uh, humankind the world over. Um, you can just guess uh, that uh, she would have been playing her role in ensuring that uh, we find a way as a scientist of uh, confronting this pandemic and, uh, and, and succeeding in, in, in defeating it. But we also at a time when we are uh, faced with gender-based violence, uh, people are supposed to be uh, lovers and protectors of women, uh, but kill them, uh, maim them. And uh, we definitely have uh, in respect and remembrance of Mam Charlotte Maglege to intensify the struggle which she lived to fight, uh, fighting patriarchy in, so, in society and uh, ensuring that uh, uh, gender equality in a non-sexist society, she put that those building blocks of the kind of South Africa we're talking about today a non-sexist society. We're talking here of a woman uh, who defied all odds, stacked against her, and achieved the highest honor graduating in the Bachelor of Science degree in Wilberforce University in the United States of America, outsmarting even her own op uh, uh, oppressors and men of her own ilk. She became the first woman in Africa to graduate, particularly in the field of natural science. On her return from the United States in 1902, she attended a meeting organized uh, under the banner of the South African Native uh, Convention in Gomani, Gugomani, uh, in Eastern Cape. Because of her gender, she was refused a right to participate fully in that gathering. One important thing about Umam Charlotte, uh, people would uh, comment about her getting into meetings which ordinarily society didn't expect her to be there. And it wasn't a mistake from her side. She was defiant. She was defiant. And she ensure that uh, uh, she does that because she lived ahead of her times. Uh, she understood that if you are going to deal with challenges facing South African society, particularly women uh, of, of race, of class, of gender, you've got to equip yourself, you've got to be ready for that uh, so that they wage uh, that war. But this invited the strong rebuke of these men from the founding Secretary General of the African National Congress, Sol Platki. And this is what Sol Platki said. What was the state of affairs at the convention? Out of a gathering of 40 robust masculine men 
not one could boast of even a Kafarian degree. Why is Miss Charlotte, who has refused admittance on account of her sex, is, besides other attainments, a BSc of an American university, and in a report covering more than nine columns of Izu, hers was the neatest and most sensible little speech. We are great believers in classification, you know, but classifications of the right kind, not discrimination, and just as strongly as we object to the line of demarcation being drawn on the basis of person's sex, the convention would surely have benefited by the experience of one who, though a woman, is not only their intellectual superior, but is besides leading an adventurous missionary life amongst hatreds of Zodbanspec, while they demonstrate their manliness by leisurely enjoying the sea, the sea breezes at the coast, close quote. This, this uh, is one part. It's, a, it's, a, it's not an, an easy subject. The subject of Marshall Lord MacLege is not an easy one because you must talk about Marshall Lord MacLege as an activist, worker, leader, as a trade unionist. You must talk about her as a spiritual leader. Uh, you must talk about Marshall Lord MacLeague as an artist. That singing, uh, President uh, of the Women's League, as you said, was not just singing. It was singing with the cause that uh, her spiritual being, her being an artist in nature, uh, was for a cause, a good cause, uh, for equality in the country. You, you also must talk about her as a gender activist uh, and a fighter against the uh, patriarchy. We've got to talk about her as a revolutionary, a death-defying being in her life. I'm, I'm glad the, the, the president of the Women's League did touch uh, on the defiance campaign, which is very popular in this country. The Madibas, the Sobugues, uh, the banning of passes in the 50s. To understand the figure we are conversing about today is to understand that one year after the formation of the African National Congress, in 1913, she led women in Bloemfontein, defiant, <coughs> defiant against the authorities, led women to ban passes in 1913, not 1952, as it is popular. It's popular because mainly it was men who was leading the struggle. And that, that also defines the kind of society we are. So defiant was May Charlotte MacLeague and her comrades that she con they confounded the Secretary General of the ANC, couldn't understand what to make of this. Remember that the leadership of the ANC was a learned gentleman mm -hmm. of note. Um, and when they saw a defiance campaign resolved leading to the arrest of women. And, 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 and Ma Charlotte McLeague was never alone, wherever she was. Uh, we must remember leaders like Ma Habashane, like Ma Kozi, like Mrs. Lowe. We must remember all of them because they taught a one-year-old African National Congress, a lifetime lesson. 
So when they were arrested, and mind you, they were arrested in June, very cold in Bloemfontein. They were forced to walk bare feet in prison in Bloemfontein. The authorities spoke to the leaders of the time. The Secretary General then went to uh, Sol Platki, went to convince women about their act. You know, they, they needed to be civil, you know, uh, as far as uh, the leadership at the time would, would, would think. And they could see the cracks on the, on the feet of women in, in the coldest of weather in this country, of, of provinces in this country. And she, he pleaded with them that, no, but uh, let's try and do something. We'll talk with authorities so that you are, you are released. And what, what, what surprised the African National Congress leadership, and particularly the Secretary General, who was there to interact with them, was their response from women. And their response was very clear. They said, no, we, we hear you, Mr. Sol Platki, and we are really suffering here. We want to go back to our homes. But let us tell you something. If this past law thing continues, so shall our struggle. Even as we are released, we'll continue where we left off. The Secretary General couldn't know, I didn't know how to, to handle this kind of a situation. Because uh, women had uh, uh, made their mark. So there's been Discrimination throughout her life uh, against her, uh, Mam Charlotte McLeague, but such actions never discouraged her, nor broke her spirit to place women issues on the agenda. She became a symbol of resistance, torchbearer, and a trendsetter, if we use today's language. Mm. May Charlotte Manya McLeague an iconic and parallel colossus woman that was ahead of her time, she transversed effortless, effortlessly from politics to religion to education to community development, women uh, empowerment. When she attended the inaugural conference of the African National Congress. Ma Charlotte Matlaike, born on the 7th of April, 1871, passed away on the 16th of October, 1939. The National Heritage Council and the Charlotte Manya Matlaike Institute in partnership with the Department of Arts and Culture holding this press briefing on the launch of the countdown to the 150 year anniversary of Charlotte Matlaike in 2021. As you can see, the Minister of Transport is at the lectern. He's gonna give us a briefing with regards to his interaction with the